Hi, Larry. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Valerie, you started from Santiago, Chile. You were going to go to uh, Buenos Aires. When did you find out you weren't? <laughs> it wasn't going as planned. Um, actually, we got our first um, sniff that something was going wrong after we went to the um, Argentinian port of Ushua mm -hmm. because we had some Argentinian friends that were on the cruise, and they had spoken to someone in Buenos Aires that said, we're not going to let you into Buenos Aires. So we did have quite a bit of advance warning, but the ship wasn't saying anything. They said, oh, yes, life is good. And the next stop was the Falkland Islands, which went as planned. Then we should have gone into Puerto Madryn, and that was canceled. And then we got to Buenos Aires, which was a... Um, an experience, and we had to get flights off out of, I'm sorry, flights from Buenos Aires back to wherever we were going. At that point, I live in Colombia. Mm -hmm. At that point, Colombia was still open, so we had flights all set. Um, it, it was most bizarre. that They cleared the ship. The Argentinian authorities cleared the ship, but they wouldn't let us off it, so everybody missed their flights. And then we had to make more flight arrangements, and then those were canceled at the last minute. Um, and then it just went really haywire from there. Montevideo wouldn't let us in. Rio wouldn't let us in. Uh, Barbados wouldn't let us in. So we've been floating through the Caribbean and the Atlantic, and and we were supposed to go into... Fort Lauderdale tomorrow, but whilst I was waiting for you, the captain made an announcement mm -hmm. to say that we would not be going into Fort Lauderdale as planned tomorrow. Now, now Valerie, all these ports that wouldn't accept you, uh, why go to them if they don't accept you? I mean, did they change at the last minute? Did they initially tell the captain they could, they would accept you, and then they changed their mind uh, when you got there? That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, that is my understanding, yeah. How many? And, you know, one thing. Um, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no you go ahead. Um, a lot of people did get off in Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. A lot of people made their flights. Um, we missed two. Um, I was scheduled. We were taking the cruise as a way to get to Buenos Aires. We had business in Buenos Aires, so we were taking the two-week cruise, and then doing another three weeks in Buenos Aires. So, mm -hmm. um, but they obviously they wouldn't let us into the country. By then, they'd shut it down. How many people, Valerie, were on the boat at first? I'm told about 1,800. How many are, how many are there now? About 1,000. About 1,000. Uh, how many of the 1,000 have contracted the coronavirus as far as you know? Well, this is what we know. Um, they tested... Let me back up. Um, they announced on Tuesday that there was coronavirus on board. Mm -hmm. And um, they sent 13 tests when we went into Barbados. They did um, 13 tests, 12 of which came back positive. Um, however, um, I, I don't know. I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we've got more than that. You... We, we rendezvoused with another princess ship today mm -hmm. to get supplies, medical supplies, and the captain announced we're, we're rendezvousing with one of the um, Holland America ships tomorrow to get more supplies. So it doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. Have you been tested? No, I did have a clue. Mm -hmm. uh, I was put in isolation, but um, no, I wasn't tested. Uh, obviously, this ship did not plan on not, uh, uh, you know, going somewhere for 30 days. What about food? What about clean water? What about, you know, uh, the, you know linen, stuff like that? Right, right. Well, linens, of course, are done on the ship. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I believe that the ship can um, make its own, its own water for, for cleaning, not for drinking, obviously. So mm -hmm. There's been no problem with clean linens, but... Um, we stopped in Montevideo for two days for supplies and medications. Actually, that was – this is a much older population on this cruise. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one reason 
why it's so susceptible to, to the virus. When we were in Montevideo, we were waiting for medications, and um, not myself, but the passengers, and the captain made the announcement that they were sorry for the delay. Mm -hmm. As I told you, we had a 1,000 people left on the ship. They were doing 500 prescriptions, so... Mm -hmm. um, a lot of medication. Are, are, are you confined to your cabin, Valerie? Absolutely. Wow. We've been confined so, to the cabin since Tuesday. So you have no interaction with anybody else on the ship? Other than when we go on the balcony. For instance, when we rendezvoused today with the Regal Princess, it was uh, very festive. Mm -hmm. Everybody was out on the balcony cheering and yelling and... Spirits were high, which mm -hmm. is good, because mm -hmm. people were getting quite nervous. I think we all suspected, or many of us suspected, that there was sickness on the ship. Um, when we were in Buenos Aires, I mentioned that many people left the ship to get flights, and right. then they missed the flights, or the flights were canceled. And then they came back onto the Coral Princess and were not put into isolation. Va Valerie, Valerie, we only have a few seconds left. Real quickly, is there gambling on the ship? And if so, do you have any money left? <laughs> <laughs> when have I ever had any money left when I gamble? <laughs> Valerie, thank you for, for calling. Love you. Be, be safe. <laughs>